Hello chemists and welcome to today's video on aromatic substitution. This is known in some exam boards as electrophilic aromatic substitution. We're going to be looking at the reactions of benzene and how it can react in nitration reactions and Friedel Crafts acylation. This is quite technical so do pause the video if you get stuck at any point and replay parts of the content. I hope you find this useful, let's get started. Let's begin our lesson on electrophilic substitution by looking at nitration of aromatic compounds. Nitration means to put an NO2 group on something, and that's done by taking something like benzene, an aromatic compound, and then we've got nitric acid here. You can see that the benzene will react with the nitric acid, and now we have this nitro group on the benzene ring. So we can call this nitrobenzene. We'll also get water as a byproduct from this reaction. The mechanism for this reaction is an electrophilic substitution, sometimes known as an electrophilic aromatic substitution. In order for this reaction to work, it's essential that we use a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst, which is actually mixed with the nitric acid before that mixture that you've then created is mixed with the benzene. If we conduct this reaction below 55 degrees, then we get mono substitution i.e. one hydrogen on this position here, which is not shown because it's skeletal, is substituted for one nitro group. If we conduct this reaction above 55 degrees, then you may result in multiple substitutions where you have multiple nitro or NO2 groups coming off of the ring. Let's now look at the mechanism. And the first stage of this mechanism is rather odd. We have to write an equation. So here's the sulfuric acid catalyst, concentrated. We'll mix that with concentrated nitric acid. The nitric acid, remember, though, is not a catalyst. Only the sulfuric acid is. This will produce a hydrogen sulfate ion, a nitronium ion, and water. This nitronium ion is the electrophile in the electrophilic substitution. In the first stage of the proper mechanism with the curly arrows, Electrons from the ring will attack the nitronium electrophile. I'm going to show this nitronium electrophile as if this pair of electrons being moved formed a bond on this position here. But it's very important to know that this position here already has one hydrogen atom. So I'm going to show that hydrogen atom in the intermediate because it's involved in the next stage of the mechanism. We've got a positive charge on the ring now, which has been delocalized into the ring. We've also shown this horseshoe-like breakage in the ring of delocalized electrons as some of them were used in making this bond here. It's important that this horseshoe-like structure faces where you made the bond. So I made the bond on this position here. So the top of the horseshoe, the opening in the horseshoe, faces that position. Now what we've got to do is get rid of this hydrogen atom so that this is a full substitution. Ultimately, substitution means to remove something and to replace something. So we're going to lose this hydrogen here, and that's going to be lost as H+. And it gives its electrons back to the ring, re-aromatizing the ring. That means to restore the delocalized ring of electrons. And there we go. We've substituted our hydrogen for our nitro group, and we've regenerated H+. Now, you might be thinking, what happens with that H+, if you are, it's a good thought. It reacts with the hydrogen sulfate again to reform the sulfuric acid. So therefore, because H plus was present at the start and the end of the reaction, or sulfuric acid was present at the start and the end, then it definitely classifies it as a catalyst. A common follow-up reaction to nitration is reduction of that very nitro group that we just formed. That means to make it into an amine. Let's look at this reaction scheme. You can see here I've got nitrobenzene. It has the NO2 group, hence the prefix nitro. And at the end here, you can see I've got phenylamine. The NH2 group makes it an amine. What we can see is this is reduction because it's the removal of oxygen, or we could say it's the addition of hydrogen. So that's why we're using H in square brackets to show this as a reduction. To perform this, we need to use a tin catalyst with concentrated hydrochloric acid. If we add that to these reagents here and then reflux, and then follow that up in a second stage by adding sodium hydroxide 
solution. Then you'll get your aromatic amine and water as a byproduct. You might be thinking, why do we need 6H? Well, we've first got to get rid of these two oxygens. To get rid of oxygen in redox, we always form water. So we're going to need at least four hydrogens to form the two waters that these two oxygens are capable of making. So that accounts for four of the six. Then, if we look at this product here, it's got two hydrogens. So we need to add another two hydrogens onto the nitrogen. So we've got two hydrogens here and four hydrogens here change from the starting material, hence 6H. Now we're going to look at a type of electrophilic substitution called Friedel-Crafts acylation. Take benzene here and we're reacting it with ethanoyl chloride. So this is an acyl chloride. If this reaction is done in the presence of an aluminium trichloride catalyst, which is sometimes known as a halogen carrier catalyst, then you will acylate the benzene ring or the aromatic ring. Also, because we're using an acyl chloride, we'll always get HCl or hydrogen chloride gas as a byproduct. You can see it's been acylated because we've added a carbonyl group and with an alkyl chain onto it. The name of this product would be phenylethanone because this part is too long and it's part of a ketone and then we've got a phenyl group. The mechanism for this reaction is electrophilic substitution and the reagents and conditions are as follows. We add an acyl chloride, an aluminium trichloride catalyst, known as a halogen carrier, and then we reflux the solution. It's also very important that this reaction is not done under aqueous conditions because that would immediately hydrolyze the acyl chloride before it had a chance to react. Let's have a look at the first stage where we generate something called the acyllium ion and I'm going to refer to the acyllium ion as a carbocation and an electrophile. Essentially what we need to do is if you look at our acyl chloride, it's this part of its structure that has added onto the aromatic ring. And we know that aromatic rings like to attack positively charged electro electrophiles. So what we've got to do is make this structure here positively charged. And that's where our catalyst comes into play. It's a halogen carrier because it's able to essentially hold on to the halogen from the acyl chloride temporarily. The electrons from the carbon chlorine bond move on to the aluminium, taking chlorine with it. And this generates an intermediate aluminium tetrachloride, which is negatively charged. And you can see because the chlorine from the acyl chloride has moved on to the aluminium tetrachloride, we now have our acyllium ion, a positively charged version of our acyl chloride with the chlorine removed. This can now go forward to be attacked by the ring in the electrophilic substitution. Let's now show our mechanism for the electrophilic substitution. This will be exactly the same as what you saw for nitration. We'll take benzene and the acyllium ion electrophile that we just generated. The ring will attack the positively charged carbon of the carbonyl on the acyllium ion. This will form our intermediate. Don't forget to show the hydrogen that was already there in our skeletal structure and delocalize the positive charge throughout the ring and break the ring of delocalized electrons in a horseshoe shape to face where the bond was made. We now need to get rid of this positive charge by losing hydrogen. Hydrogen gives its electrons back to the ring and leaves as H+. This generates our product, in our case phenylethanone, and we get H plus ion generated. Finally, we need to regenerate the catalyst, and the H plus is useful for that. We formed earlier during the halogen carrier stage an aluminium tetrachloride anion here. This can react with the H plus as follows. One of the chlorines wants to leave, so the electrons from the aluminium chlorine bond go on to hydrogen, which will form HCl or hydrogen chloride, and that will reform our aluminium trichloride catalyst. The HCO will leave as white fumes. Right then, well thank you very much for watching this video. If you've been watching my videos in order, this does actually conclude the video series on mechanisms. We've covered them all by this point. Um, if you haven't seen my other mechanism videos, then do go back and watch them to make sure you've seen all of the mechanisms in the AQA A level.
Now do remember as well that mechanisms isn't all of organic chemistry, it's only a part of it. There are plenty more organic reactions that you need to know and you need to be able to write reaction equations for, draw reaction schemes for, know all of the different conditions and stuff like that. So those videos from me will come in the future. I'm not quite sure when yet, um, but they will be done. So depending on when you're watching this, they might be available already, but they'll have a slightly different title. They won't include mechanisms in the title. So until then, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.